outside I was lost But now I'm found I'm a child of Israel I heard the sound, you hear the sound. Please give me the strength to such a loving and a loving extended family and it goes into what I would like to speak about tonight shortly you don't know what it means to me personally to come to one of these holy days or come to a church or come to where brothers and sisters are gathering and see a brother or sister that I've known was in it from the beginning and to see them from one year to the next with that same passion for the truth. And some people ask me, well, Elder, how do you, how do you endure? When did it start? As a matter of fact, we had a conversation, Elder, Elder uh, Gabar, on the way here. Gaja asked me, Elder Gaja asked, how did you find the truth? But, but, but what's more important is not how I found it. We was talking about it, and, and, and the, when, I, when I go back, the story is quite intriguing because everyone has their own personal story that, you know, you could probably relate to me with, right? But all in all, that's not more, more important than the fact that I love the most time more so now than the first time I heard the truth. And I believe that this is the truth. And the fact that I've endured from that time is a blessing. You understand? And I'm not saying that as a compliment to me. It's a compliment to you when I see a familiar face who have endured through so much in this truth. Because why? The truth and enduring through this can be hell. And to still keep a smile on our face and to, and to stay dedicated to this truth is a blessing in itself, brothers and sisters. And to be able to endure, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, what, what I've experienced <laughs> amongst the children of Israel is a trying, trying trial. Let me tell you this. You've heard me say it during times of frustration. And I've said it privately with other elders. Based on some of what we experience sometimes, do you really think that any man in their right mind would choose to do this? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Elder Gaja asked, well, Elder Rikar Shiar, how did you find this? What happened? Because I told him when there was not too many people in the church, when I was overseas, sleeping on an air mattress, I told Gaja, the Most High have a mission for this church. 
and we're going to go throughout the four corners of the earth and spread the gospel of Christ. And you're going to look up, and there's going to be a multitude of people. It can't happen unless someone put their hands to the, to the, to the plow and endure. So my compliment more so goes to not to the person who comes in with, with all the passion and vigor and fire, because that's easy in the, in the beginning. That's easy. you just floating off of pure spirit. Some people are looking at I, mean, I remember being in charge of a video department and just looking at videos day and night and being fed strictly off of the information. People were concerned for my health on whether or not I ate, drank, because I didn't need anything but the word of the Most High. So I know how it is looking at those videos and saying, listen, I, need to, I know I'm supposed to be sleeping, but I'm going I'm to hit the play one more time. Let me tell you. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you straight out, and I, you've probably heard, it, heard me say it before. I didn't think I was called to be a teacher at all. Zero. Only the most I knew. I didn't come in wanting to be a teacher. I didn't come in thinking about teaching. I came in to help. When I came in, there were already teachers with beards hitting the floor. What could I teach? But I'm like, you know what? They're my elders. I'm going to help those men. So I, I don't even want to think about trying to do what they're doing. I mean, I'm sitting here listening to them. Let me look into areas that could compliment them. What, let me find out what's not being done so that the world can hear what I'm hearing. I didn't want to be a teacher. At all. Came inside a building and I seen the knowledge that was taught and realized, well, listen, no one can purchase this because there's no video department. Went to three separate houses. Got old VCRs from two separate, one brother and one sister, and I fixed an old VCR that was in my house. Daisy chained them together and started a video department. I went downstairs and I'm like, I, all I need is some space to begin making videos. I'm like, I'll just produce the videos for the people in respect of my elders, my teachers. And I'm like, all I need is space. I can never forget this. A brother, Haradapia, may the Lord bless his soul, said, I have some space for you, brother. You look fervent. You look, look ready. He took me downstairs. And there was a dirty, roach-infested basement with all types of particles, unbeknownst to man, totally unclean, and I look, and he says, yeah, here's a space for you right here. A few spider webs. And I'm like, brother, the spider webs is, is the least of my problems here. But you, he said, here's a space. I'm like, con, yes, sir. He came back. You know what? I put on my white thing all over. Went to Home Depot, got a white set up. Told my little brother, listen, come on, brother, come here with me. And I, I paid him $50. We clean up the whole basement. When it came down, you can eat off the floor. It was daisy chain. I had a desk. I had a catalog. I had everything numbered. And we were pumping out videos for the church. We didn't need a, I didn't need to be a teacher. I needed to be a servant. A servant. And I need y'all to understand something. So boom, the video departments is gone, but something is going on because back then there was no fast forward and all those things. 
in order for you to make a videotape with a VHS, you had to look at the whole thing all the way through. And you can't be selling our people some broke tapes in North Philly and think you're getting out safe. Right? So I had to look at these things all the way through. But you know what the most I was doing? Downloading information. I was looking at the best of teachers that I revered and taking all the best parts of what I've learned from them. And I seen their tactics on how to do certain things in certain scenarios. Quite intriguing. I didn't realize it would be used at a later date, but that's what happened. The video department became what it be became. And then after that, I'm like, well, okay, I'm getting bored with this. What else can I do? Boom. They didn't have no sewing department. Did I know how to sew? No. But I'm like, a straight, all I'm doing is a straight line. That's Who can't do that? I can draw a straight line. I'm sure I can sew a straight line. So the same guy, Horadopia, brought some sewing machines downstairs. From the, I don't know where he got them from, but they were all broke. Back then, you couldn't go to YouTube. Come on, I'm cracking here. Back then, you couldn't go to YouTube and do a DIY on sewing machines. You had to actually go to the Chinese man and find out about sewing machines. So I went to Chinatown. Built the machines, put the oil on them, fixed the machines, and pumped out a department. And guess what? That Passover afterwards, the high priest of so-called New York, they were all wearing garments that was coming from that sewing department. You know what? I didn't look to get stood up. I didn't want anyone to recognize me. No. I was gracious for the work that was put in before me. I didn't want to be standing up. I didn't want no rank. I didn't want none of that stuff. I, I was doing my due diligence for the kingdom of heaven in respect of my elders and wanting my people to come to the, the knowledge of the most high. That was all my intentions. I'm going to tell you that right now. And even after that, I'm like, huh. Let's do some more. Went in the studio while recording, converted a videographer who was known in the Philadelphia area. And we began a te television show. Went to, went to the cable stations ourselves and set up cable access. The Hidden Truth. Produced it. Helped produce it. And I became the host of it. And then we would break down the scriptures later. Man, the thing flew off. People started getting the truth. Three in the morning, but they were getting it. All over the earth, we started doing that. I became a servant. One day, Brother Dawada said, Brother, you need to get out of that cellar, brother. I'm like, what? Come on, man. I'm good. I don't need to teach. Got out of the cellar. He said, you coming to camp tonight. Every time I'm seeing you working for everybody else, look at your shoes. I'm going to buy you some boots, brother. I'm like, listen, what I need boots for? I don't need to be seen. I'm here in the cellar. Man, get out of there, brother. You're going to lose your sight down there in the cellar, brother. you going to lose your sight down there. I order you to come to camp, brother. I said, cunt. Cunt another one, cunt. <laughs> Getting out of the cellar. My manager. Now, mind you, I'm about to get signed to a record deal and everything, and my manager been looking for me for months. Not answering his phone. Why? Because I'm taught at this time, the Jews are the Bible, that, the Jews are the devil that the Bible speaks of, brother. You understand that, brother? Cunt. I wasn't even thinking about him. I go out there, stand in the Majim Shabbat, and guess who walks up? My old manager. Rich, what's wrong with you, man? 
I've bled for you. I've sacrificed stuff for my family for you, brother. I got something on the table, and you you sitting here with these guys? And I'm looking dead at him. And you know what? I feel for him. Why did I feel for him? Well, a few years before that, I'm giving y'all a story here. A few years before that, my young brother, we in a group called the Diamond Five at this time. We were supposed to rival so-called New Edition before that. You see how that worked out. Um, I remember at Franklin Plaza, they was having an audition to uh, replace Bobby Brown. They, they went to some city, couldn't even find him. Maurice Starr is there, Franklin Plaza. I'm auditioning for New Edition. I remember all that. This guy looking for me. Now, here's the point of why I'm looking at this Jew and feeling for this, this brother, this man. He believed in me. When you are a young black young man with not much to do, and the only thing you can do is probably play basketball or sing to get out of this, it feels good to know that someone outside of your community believes in you. Check this out. My brother, he was simple as a day's old. Lord have mercy. 15 years old. My father battling with emphysema. My brother get in the car with three guys and they go to Susquehanna Avenue. My brother's in the back of the car. Shouldn't have been in the back of the car. What happens? They leave my brother in the back of the car. The guy gets out of the car, runs back to the car with blood all over. He blew a Chinese man brains out when my little brother was in the car. Y'all never heard these stories before. I need to give, take y'all on a journey here. Three blocks away from my house. Three people in the car, my brother's in the car. A little later, the cops come and pick my brother up because the people in the car, somebody in the car, Dom, that my brother was in the back of the car. They want to charge him as an adult. They bring my mother in, and I don't know why they didn't call me first. My brother's 15. I'm a, you know, I'm a little older. I'm going to show you why I'd be looking at this Jew asking me, I bled for you why I felt a certain type of way when he said that. Hey, I was about to make money anyway in the record business, so my mother goes to the the police station, 17th, near 17th and Montgomery in North Philly. My brother's in the sweat box saying, I'm going to charge, we're going to charge him. They knew they should have called me. But anyway, my mother gets in the room and tell my, my little brother, Gabar, the truth shall make you free. Tell them the truth. Now, I wouldn't have told them a lot, but I would have said, lawyer. Lawyer. My brother does a confession. A recorded confession as well as a written confession. He's done. My father's sick. Going to see him every day up at the detention center. I'm trying to deal with the music. This is right before I got the truth. And this Jew guy looked me right in the eye who was, believe me as a kid, and said, you know what? It's going to cost some money. I know you're dealing with a few things. Some of that money going to have to go towards this. But because of his age, I think we can get him off. Check it out. Yeah, we paid a good penny. I sacrificed everything I had. But that lawyer, but that man got the lawyer. And he did exactly what he told me he was going to do. He says, listen, I'm going to make sure your brother don't serve a day in jail. I'm like, I don't know how you're going to do this with a paid, I mean, with a, 
admitted confession. The one that shot the guy on Susquehanna got lethal injection. He's dead now. Two of the guys, two of the guys that was in the car right now is doing life imprisonment till this day. My brother got five years probation and has been free since the age of 20. Now check that out. He was the guy who paid $50 to help clean the basement. He better went down to that basement with me, right? But anyway, that now the same Jew is looking at me. This same guy is saying, listen, I bled for you. You just want to leave me like this? You just going to do this with th these people? And I sat and looked at him. A little t I'm tearing up a little bit thinking about it because I have a history with this man. And I remember I remember the general coming up. I'm not going to mention his name and saying, devil get out of our face and go up the street before we drag you up the street. And he says, you get to the other side. And then, yeah, then I seen Dawada. Dawada took me up the street to get some pizza at Sabaro and say, listen, brother, you want to speak, brother? You want to speak? You got something you need to say? Well, I guess, sir, I'll speak today. I spoke. For the first time, I spoke. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, it, was, it wasn't even standing room. The cops had to come move the people out of the way. Even Zion Osh, Elder Zion Osh, who the Gather of Christ Church started with, say he's, that's the first time he's seen at a street speaking with an Israelite. He was in it before me. That after someone spoke, it was a standing ovation. He says he'd never seen it before. He says, brother, this, this is your calling as a teacher, brother. And Dawada said, I told you, you can teach, brother. You can teach, brother. I'm like, listen, man, it's okay. But it was the passion that came from the experience that led me there that showed what the calling was. And I'm breaking this down to you that the truth is not just hand you are an Israelite. The truth is a life experience that leads you to the point in which you realize your true calling. And understand that every part of your life and everyone that was placed in your life was for the most high, for that purpose when you realize you were Israel and now all things are resolved. And the race is not to the swift. To the swift. It's not about what you want out of this and what I feel I should have out of this. It's understanding your purpose and walking in it. Having faith to walk in it. Now I know it probably y'all wonder, well, what happened to the Jew? Probably. <laughs> now it's not a part of my story, but I thought I would put some things out there to let y'all know the story. I didn't look to be a teacher. I didn't look to do any of this. But I'll tell you this: when I realized what the Most High wanted me to do, I did it. That's the point. That's the point. And I'm not going to let no one, and I guess what? And I encourage all of you not to let anyone discourage your path because they can't see the end of this. Only you can. You have to make your election sure and understand that anything that stops me from getting from point A to point B is the devil that the Bible speaks of, not the Jew or the white man. Let me tell you, and I'll say not the Jew or the white man because why? I've learned something in this truth. The white man is not stopping us from growing. He's not stopping us from revealing, from forgetting this truth. He's not stopping us from revealing it. I've never seen a white man stop me from doing any of this.
But you know who I've seen? The children of Israel. That's who I've seen. My greatest obstacle in all the years I've been in the truth hasn't been the white man, folks. At all. Every obstacle, every point, every point that I can point to in which a crossroad was placed before me. Where I had a choice to say, you know what? Should I do this anymore? Maybe I should just let it all drop and go somewhere. Okay? Every time I've dealt with that crossroad, it's been an Israelite on the other side of it. As the cause of it. Every time. Every time. And I'm like, really? And now I understand to some degree when someone stand before you and look you in your eye and say, I've bled for you. I've done this for you. I've worked. And this is what we get in return? Hatred? Variance? Being cut down by your own people? You don't understand what it takes to finish something. Because why? You don't know what it, you don't know how to start something. You can only care for something like a, like a mother cares for a child because she, she born, she bear that child. She understands that that child, through good or bad, is going to be her baby and she's going to take care of that baby until the grave. Anyone can come in later, after the work has been built, with an opinion. But they don't know how to finish. And guess what? I'm not speaking just for me, brothers and sisters. I'm saying all of you, there's nothing common to men. All of you have the same exact penny. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. I don't care if one of you came in last week. If you stay into the end and I end up falling off, guess who gets the penny, folks? You gets the penny. So I'm here to encourage you, brothers and sisters, to when, when you see your calling, when the Most High reveal it to you, run with it. But you know what? Run with it in order and in honor. Always do it in honor. Have y'all noticed, brothers and sisters, regards? Y'all know where I came from. A lot of you are from, you know, I'm looking at New York right now. You know where I came from. Have you ever seen me outwardly demean or speak against those who've instilled anything in me? Even one video? Do I made a personal attack? You think I don't know anything personal about these brothers or these elders? But to dishonor them would be dishonoring the Most High. Regardless of where the Most High brought me in doctrine, I can never forget who instilled and worked before me and instilled something in me that still burns today. That still, that fire is still there. And that order is still there. When I say order, the first thing that happens when you go into that school they teach you how to respect your elders. And what I've learned since we don't got the military thing set up, people tend to disrespect that honor that one must have within this truth to be guided through the, to the most high. It's honor. It's about honor. It's not about how much knowledge you know and how much how many precepts you got. It's about honor. That's what the truth is about. It's about honor, folks. So till this day, guess what? And I'm going to tell you right now. I'm no different today as a person than I was when I got the truth of the most high. I'm a little wiser. That comes with age. Honor, folks. 
And that's why I respect those that I see from year to year. That I, when I see familiar faces, those that have endured, who could have walked away. That's why. You put it on. That's why. Because we are in Christ. You and me. I'm you. Okay? No different. I was in the audience. I was looking at, man, that was a deep precept. Man, that's a deep thing he dropped right there. And a lot of you brothers, I'm going to tell you, a lot of you brothers who are in the wings that are just servants, you don't know, you don't realize the most time is making you at this point, it's cultivated you as a leader. It's not about the person that's always out front, that always want to be here. Who can look at me? You know? Nah. That's the last person the most I want. He love you. But you have to knock you down a few notches to use you. The Christ, let me tell you, a lot of people look at the disciples. Do your research on the disciples, brothers and sisters. It tell you in the records of Clement that the most time, Christ, you know why Christ chose the disciples? They were the worst men in Israel. They were the worst men. You can easily, you can easily get someone who has it together and say, well, okay, I can see that. His family are from Pharisee. His, his family grew up in the knowledge. No. Nah. Christ said, you know what? I'm not even going to go to those guys. Here it is. Let me go to these dudes. These guys cast the nets. They was using their boats for all types of stuff, not just fishing when you do the research. They would deal with piracy and all types of things with those, with those boats, folks. He says, no, I'm going to make you fishers of men. Judas, oh my goodness. He was all about, he was a hustler. Okay, I'm, you know, when, I, when I did the research on these guys, I'm like, Lord, we are the children of God. It's us. I mean, I'm looking online. I'm seeing a guy. I, we, we, we looked at a video the other day, myself and Gaja, a guy by the name of Umar Johnson. He done made almost a million dollars using four letters, FDMG. That's it. He just used four letters and said he's going to buy a, get a school and got almost a million dollars out of our people. So when I've seen people that Christ chose, I'm like, you know what? It wasn't about the wise of this world. It was about the lowly of this world. And the, his whole few years in, in the beginning of his ministry was instilling in them faith. Faith outside of, of what they've learned, their regular norm, their regular education. It's the faith in what they were witnessing in this wise young man. That I'm going to tell you right now, it transcends the laws of this earth. Eventually, they seen it. They seen it more so when the Holy Spirit came down on them and then it all came together. But he chose these lowly, lowly meek men they wasn't running all out in front and all that. No. Christ picked the lowly and instilled faith in them as an example for, for us and this church. It wasn't the guy who said, yeah, Christ, hey, what can I do to get this kingdom of heaven? So you got to get, what, what, what do you do? Well, I keep all the commandments. Uh, I honor my mother and father. I do the Sabbath. I pay alms. Uh, I don't covet what is my neighbor's. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm the bond. Christ says, and you have said it. You follow the law. Good man. Sell all you have and give it to the poor and follow me. 
Now, you know I had to do research beyond that. The most I had it where this man was going to get a hundredfold within a year if he would have gave everything up. There was plans with his money that the treasury would have quite, totally made all this money and would have gave it back to him. When you do the research on this guy, he walked away bitterly because he had so much to give. And then, see, these are the examples I look at in actually dealing with the church. This is how I know that this is the church of Christ and we are the children of Israel. When I see living examples in comparison to what I've read. When I see someone mising over something or acting on something like, yeah, I did this and I gave this. I'm like, okay. But have you given everything? Well, you pay 10%, huh? Do you know that I pay 100%? Do you know that when, 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 when the chips were down and when the work had to get done, that I made a choice to say, you know what? No corporate world. You can't have me. Okay? You can't have me. Do you know I got put out of my house and said, well, okay, only, only thing I need is, is one hour. They said, I'll give you one hour. And I told my son, son, you know what time it is. I prepared you for this. Get your back. 10%? 100%. I don't know what it is to give 10%. And I'm not talking about money either. So that's when I look at the law and understand it on, 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 on the level Christ was trying to instill in that rich man who knew the law. What am I what what am I dropping here to you all, brothers and sisters? What I'm dropping here to you is the fact that the spirit of the law is on an entirely different level. And the foundation of that law is honor and love and respect meekness endurance listen to this real quick elder lawyer get a few what I got here check check get a few of the scriptures I wanted to grab earlier and then I'm going to pass it to any, all the other elders they have a the few things to say but I thought I would take you all on a journey, brothers and sisters, and show you Christ. Let me tell you, even the men that's before you, I didn't choose none of these men. Most I chose them. I didn't choose no, I don't do no, I don't do any choosing. Okay? I'm in the work. That's it. And the most high is moving the pieces he's moving the pieces but I said you know what I'm like tonight I'm going to take them down memory lane let them know what this truth is about and thank them for enduring and encourage brothers and sisters to endure through this okay and you're going to have some lapse in faith guess what it comes with the work. You're going to have doubt. You're going to have frustration. You're going to have hard days. It comes with the work. It does. But I'm going to tell you this. When those moments come, and they will come, I need you all to get to yourself and remember this moment on the Feast of Tabernacles when the elders said, you know what? Tomorrow will be better. You know what? Let's 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 move his hand. Exactly. And don't dishonor anyone when that spirit come on you. Don't dishonor anyone and don't dishonor yourself because you're gonna get those moments. 
In order to endure, let me tell you, you're going to have people offend you to the point where you, you'll ask yourself, how can this be the truth? How can you be in the truth doing this to me? You're going to have those moments. Like, what Bible are you reading? You're going to have those moments. Don't forget, check this out. The man in which Christ instilled his ministry, Peter. Peter offended Christ more than once. But Christ still seen his ministry in Peter because what was revealed to Peter, only the Father could have revealed it to him. So in, in spite of Peter's faults, Christ knew who Peter was, who, who, who he would eventually become. Once the Holy Spirit take over, he's seen the beginning and the ending of Peter. That's why he instilled his church in Peter. Not just because of those offensive moments. It was times he told Peter, Satan, get behind me. Now that was a moment. Now imagine Christ calling a brother Satan today. Can you imagine if Christ himself with the keys to heaven, looking at you, saying, "Brother, Satan, get behind me!" You know, oh my God, did he call me Satan? <laughs> you can see, man, and I see this over emotion of brother. I think the elder don't like me. Man up! Man up, man! Why? Because Peter knew Christ loved him. Peter wasn't man enough. Like, no, you can't go, Christ. What about us? He said, don't you know I must go? When I go, you will be empowered through the Holy Spirit. It can't happen unless I go first. Man up. Satan, get behind me. Man up. You can't even... You can't even lightly correct a brother anymore without them feeling that you're coming down on them or you're, you're taking my soul. It's like, where's, where's the honor? I'm going to tell you, we're going to have to toughen up, man. Brothers and sisters, we have to toughen up. Because offense is going to cause more betrayal. I know you look around some strong men, people that used to be around, and I know people ask, yo, yo, yeah, Elder, yeah, man, how the brother's doing, and where's the brother that used to be in there? I'm like, listen, they know where we are. Okay. I'm not going backward. The kingdom is forward. Now, if you can't endure, if I've been enduring since the beginning, and you get a little feeling and can't endure, listen, that's your man up moment. Okay? Brothers and sisters have to endure until the end. I know sometimes it's rough. It's early in the morning. I don't want to get up. I'm tired. Sabbath, this, that. But you still, you, you, you're here. You do it. So I'm here to encourage you, brothers and sisters. And I pray that you endure through all offenses to find your calling. Let me repeat that again. You must endure through your trials and offenses to understand your calling. And brothers, I'm going to tell you, I thank the Most High. I thank the Most High for what I went through in the infancy of this truth. I look back and say, this is why the Lord gave me that back then.
because he understood what the mission would be now. He understood it. I didn't understand it. Can you imagine? Brothers, you're doing push-ups. You're sitting there running around with all black. Cat sitting there talking to you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah brother. What, it, it, calling you all out your name and all types of things. You, you weak. You weak. You can't do one more. You weak. And they're looking at you. And you sitting there. I seen the biggest guy. Couldn't even move. Just sweating. He, he, and he would go that extra mile. I'm like, brother, I'm going to stand back here with you. go back there with them, brother. You're going to do 50 more, brother. Cats ready. They're talk, almost talking about your mother and everything else. You can't go through an offense. They're like, bro, bro. He, they would say, listen, brother. If you offended now, what's going to happen when the white man come through? This is what you're going to do, brother. And I'm like, no, sir. Man up then. Drop down and do me 50 just to give me 50. <laughs> Y'all don't know what we've been through. Here it is, you on the phone and, you know, conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been gone for four days. You know, I've been waiting for you. Well, man, I'm waiting for you too, but. Then they say, you weak. Look at you. You weak. And you sitting there, and you sitting there, listen, hang up the phone. I'm like, this is my family here. Hang up the phone. Give me 50. <laughs> then I come home. I, I, I think you in a cult. <laughs> no Christmas. No it is, no that. But you know what? The Lord was preparing me. It's very few things that can actually offend me. Very few. Very few. The only thing that really gets uh, gets to me some, sometimes, the only thing, when I know that I did the best I could for a person with all good intentions. And then you turn around and they're the ones holding the knife. That's, that's the only, th those are the saddest days in this truth. When you know you love this person. And don't understand how that turned into hatred. Those are my toughest days in this truth. And then, I look at, I'm like, Lord, okay, tomorrow's going to be a better day. And I'm like, you know what? I know the, I, I know you because of the truth, but if you don't endure, I'll know someone else because of the truth. I'm not going back. So I wanted to go into the by and by one will be offended. That's going to be the key point in this ministry. Let me tell you, we've been talking about this for a long time. All the elders from all around the world will be together mid-October charting the future of this church. We're going to pray together. We're going to talk together. And it's going to be organized to a degree that the world going to have to understand and reckon with the spirit that have always been amongst the gathering of Christ church. We're going to have these meetings, we're going to talk, and we're going to implement it. Everything going to be implemented with timelines. No more procrastinating, no more waiting for something. No, nah. the kingdom cometh not by observation, it's within us. If we don't do it, it's not going to get done. It's time to utilize the people within the body. No more lip service, we're going to utilize we were talking in the car. That's all we were talking about in the car. Getting our buildings, setting up our own studios, setting up our own uh, uh, TV studios, setting up our own radio. We're not going to wait for no one else. We're going to do it ourselves. Set up our own uh, conversational couches. Everything we're going to do within this church. 
We're going to have it where people within the church can leave their jobs and work within the church because there's much work to do everywhere. It's not just talking about it. Let's get it real quick, Elder Lloyd. I've only got a few more, and I can pass the mic to any other elder who would like to say anything before we uh, turn it over to, uh, for festivities. Come on. St. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. We are the salt of the earth. Read. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. What, are, hold up. What good is salt if it doesn't change the taste of the food? If it doesn't make the food better? If it lost its savor, it's like throwing dirt in your food. What good is the salt if it's, if it's not working? How can such a righteous and peculiar people lose its flavor is what Christ is saying. Come on. Verse number. So we understand what salt is for. It's not too, guess what? There's not a meal out there that you'll cook and not throw salt in it. It's a part of every everything you eat. That's us. Right? But what good is it if we're not utilizing or dealing with our function as called by the Most High? Understanding our portion and walking in it with pure honor. Let's read, Elder Lawyer, Christ. St. Matthew chapter 13. I'll start in verse 13. Yes. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By, or by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. They shall hear and not understand. And I'm going to drop something on you. Check this out. And you know what? It's good being able to break other people down in debate using the Bible, knowing that, okay, I know this, this person don't know that. I can correct this person who's following this because I know this and they don't. I can break down a Muslim with these scriptures. I can break down a Christian with these scriptures. I can totally tear them up with that. Right? But when you learn those precepts, when you get of age and begin to learn them, you realize that the Bible wasn't, what you're learning wasn't made to break down a Christian. The Bible, the understanding of how to break down the, the scriptures was so that, we, so that we can break down ourselves. How can we use these scriptures on others and not us? <laughs> so the most high has given us the repetition not to be able to break down a Christian because that's, that's easy he's given us that those precept breakdowns say okay can I break down myself like I do a Muslim can I examine myself that way thank you I appreciate it The water. So what's more important? Me teaching or the brother that just brought us water? If we don't drink water, we die. <laughs> just more examples. <laughs> he just recognized out of nowhere, you know what? They need water. You understand? I'm just showing you just whoever came up with that. That, that's what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters. It's preferring others over yourself. That's what being a teacher is.
Let's read. Yes, sir. Verse 15. For this people's heart is waxed gross. It says this people's heart has waxed gross. This is what Christ said about us. Our hearts are changed. From the original honor we once had as, as his people. As to God's people. Read on. For this people's heart is waxed gross. And their ears are dull of hearing. And their ears are dull of hearing. Come on. And their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. So they hear what they want to hear. The truth can be before them and be like, well, no. This is what I'm saying. Well, this is what the Bible is saying, brother. But no, I can only focus on what makes me right. Your ears are closed. So you can't, none of us can hear any level of correction, can we? Let me tell you, I was in a meeting the other night, right? Check this out. I was in a meeting the other night, just as an example. I was doing all the apologizing and did nothing wrong. <laughs> I did nothing to, to, to be apologizing. But I apologized. Okay? So that maybe this person, can, these people can see something in their heart to say, you know what? Maybe I can look at my, look into myself and apologize for my part in it. You have people in certain instances that get offended to the point where they can't hear anything outside their offense. They, they, they want to be mad. They want to be offended. Even if you say, listen, I apologize. It makes them even more angry. No, I want you to hate me because I, I hate you, Negro. I hate you. No, don't say you love me. I hate you. I apologize, brother. You, you always got to think you the pure one, huh? Take it the high road, huh? I'm going to tell you. I'm like, no, I really, I didn't know you were seeing things that way. I'm sorry for that. Read on. Verse 16. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, in your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see. Look at, look at that. Blessed are your eyes that you see in your ears that you hear. Many prophets and teachers have longed to see the day we're living in now. We're in the day that John prophesied. He was shown in a vision. We're not in the vision, brothers and sisters. We are the vision. We, we're, we're the generation John seen on the Isle of Patmos in which the mark of the beast would be revealed. They can only see it in a vision. We are the living vision. And that's enough to, for me to be gracious and say, you know what? Prophets and teachers have longed to see what we're living in today. What problem can, can I really have with my brother or sister? The Lord is allowing me to live in this earth and be a part of prophecy. What issue can I possibly have? I'm just, let me tell you, I'm just as happy to be in this as you are, brothers and sisters. I'm going to tell you this. And when y'all be like, man, this is amazing. I'm amazed every day, brothers and sisters. We are living prophecy. And it doesn't make me proud. It makes me what? It makes me gracious. I thank the most time for giving me an opportunity with all my faults and all the things I've did wrong in life to allow me to be a part of something. That's prophesied. 
That's humbling. And all of you are a part of it. Blessed are your eyes that you see and your ears that you hear. We are the appreciators. We appreciate the most high. We don't, we, we're not entitled. We don't feel what we Israel anyway. We should have got, should have been got this. Come on. Verse 17. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them. Come on. And to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Come on. When any when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not. When one heareth the kingdom and understandeth it not. Now we all, believe it or not, brothers and sisters, we all received this first stage when you first heard the truth. Can you imagine what this what this tent would be we're under if everyone that heard the truth came in and endured through the truth? There would be no, no room on this campground. Read. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not. And understandeth it not, that means you, you hear it at first, but then it's like, you know, I'm not sure. Right? There's still, I'm still fighting with what I'm hearing opposed to the religion I was learned in. We all are at that stage in the beginning. Every one of us. And then what happens? Go on. Then cometh the wicked one. The wicked one. And catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. Now, does that happen to all of us? No. But someone always come at the embryo stage of our learning and say, well, you really need to check that out and be careful in what you're dealing with because I see something changing in you. Something is going on with you. You're not the same person. They go there or they'll go all together. Why don't you do the things you used to do? Why don't you go with me to do that or to do this? We all go through it. Right? Something try to steal away what the Lord is feeding you. But others get taken from it. Like I see some people who've learned the truth, stayed up day and night to learn the truth and walk away because they believe the earth is flat. It's like you're not rooted. You're not rooted because I don't agree with the shape of the earth. You're going to walk away from the body in the body of Christ, your own, your extended family, because you learned online through some conspiracy place that the earth was flat. That's a perfect example of some seed being sown. And now you're dealing with an entirely different doctrine. Based on a disagreement <laughs> of the shape of the earth. Okay, brother, I'll tell you what. All right. I'm just using this as an example. It can be anything, though, right? Okay, the earth is triangle. It's rectangle. What you want? It's square. What you want? Give me a shape. Give me the shape you want it to be. <laughs> and let's agree to go do this work. Is that good? I'll tell you what. I've, when I walk down the street, I'm on a flat surface. So I'll agree. The flat surface I'm walking on is flat. That's good enough for you? You want to baptize now? You want to stay with your family now? But we find out that it's never what they say it is. 
They're looking for a difference so that they can convince themselves that it wasn't the truth in the first place. Why? There's something in their heart that's guiding them someplace else and they're not willing to admit it. And usually it comes through an offense. Someone didn't do something they wanted them to do. Someone, did, someone didn't say something they wanted them to say. And they use these other excuses to say, well, I can easily walk away because it wasn't the truth in the first place. What do you mean it wasn't the truth? Well, they say the earth is round and I know it's flat. Okay. I'll tell you what. Do your flat earth has a hell? Is there a hell under that? Because if it is, you're going to burn in that. And when we, when we cross over, the last thing we'll be thinking about is the shape of the earth. Is there a hell under that? Well, the Bible says, this is what Christ told us. Any man that take him up the plow and walk away isn't worthy of his kingdom. So that's what you need to figure out. Not the shape of the earth, whether or not there's a hell under it or within it. Now, I'm not walking away. I don't care if the earth is rectangular. I'm going to do the will of Christ in a rectangular earth. You understand? I'm going to do my work in a rectangular earth. Then. Now, I'm just showing you as an example. Usually on the surface, brothers and sisters, it's never what people are claiming. There's always an underlying issue that they are afraid to admit. Why? Because it would show their fault. It would show how they are examining things. So they'll hide and claim, well, I was looking into something, you know, and I kind of realized that all that greatness that I seen before wasn't true in the word. This is the Christ is pointing them out here. Read. The rest of verse 19. This is he which received seed by the wayside. They received seed by the wayside. Go on. Verse 20. But he that received seed into stony places. Come on. The same as he that heareth the word. Now we have we have a lot of these. They hear the word. And a non with joy receiveth it. Man, I knew I was Israel. Man, this is deep. Elders, what you need me to do? I run through a wall. I'm going to be here to the end. Man, you couldn't believe this? Man, I'm showing my family everything. Man, I'm Israel. No, no pork chops. I'm Israel. Right? No more chitlins. You know I had to bring out those chitlins every time. And the southern pastors get mad at me when I talk those chitlins. Go on. You know, C.D. Jakes is getting hot around the collar right now. He's boy saying chicken. <laughs> Come on. Verse 21. Yet hath he not root in himself. He don't have what? Root in himself. What is that root in himself? To know your purpose. To know that, listen, you have to endure until the end. You got root now. And I'm in Christ. I believe in Christ. So if I believe in Christ, no way am I going anywhere. So what type of truth? What type of truth am I a part of that I can easily just walk away from? Mm. No, guess what? This is not Islam. You're not in Islam here. So if you don't have root in yourself. You're not rooted. You heard the truth. You use the truth to cut everybody else and break everybody else down, but you haven't found Christ within yourself. You don't have faith in Christ. You just know scripture. That's it. But you don't have faith. You don't believe in Christ because how can you believe in Christ and not endure? You have, you have lied to yourself. You have lied to yourself. If it's the truth, the truth is to the end, isn't it? This ain't the nation of Islam, folks. 
I mean, Farrakhan is about to convert. He just sideways tilting. He don't even use it. Let me tell you, this guy be using the Quran for a paperweight now. He never going into the Quran. I'm waiting for him to just, he'd probably be five minutes away from going over to the spirit world and say, let me drop it real quick. We're Israel. I'm out. There's no place, guess what? If there was another place to go and still make it, I would be there, folks. <laughs> Believe me, show me a, show me a shortcut. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I'm kind of sharp. I can, I've been seen, I'm like, well, Lord, maybe I can do it this way. Like, no, nah, you will lose your house, lose this, lose your shoes. You can't find your socks. No. I'm like, Lord, can I do it this way? I'm, I, I've been so chastened and beat to the point where I'm like, well, Lord, I'm just going to do it this way. Yeah, 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 because I'm, I'm going to shave everything off of you until you come this way. I know this is the truth. I know that I'm a prisoner to this work. Y'all heard the story of Jonah. Jonah was like, man, Lord, you just told me that Nineveh is not going to convert. Why do you want me to go prophesy to them? It could be one person there that the Lord wants. So Nineveh said, you know, you know, so Jonah said, well, listen, I can't do this. He knew all the truth. He got on a boat and a storm came. And then he looked around. Everybody, not a regular storm. I'm talking about Hurricane Florence on steroids. <laughs> and here it is. Everyone looking at him saying, well, we're going to die. We're going to die. Jonah, we're not going to die. You want to live? It's like, yeah, we want to live. We want to live. They sitting there, be be belling the hatches and pulling this up. He said, listen, don't worry about that. Throw me off the ship. <laughs> They're like, what? Just throw me off. <laughs> you want to go? They threw him overboard. And the storm stopped. He was swallowed and was in an air pocket in, in some big fish or something under the water. And the Most High had him under the water at the depth for three days, breathing that bad air within this sea creature that engulfed him. And then guess where he was spit out on shore to? Nineveh. He got up and got sook all over him. And he washed up and guess what? He was only a few blocks from where he had to prophesy. So I'm going to tell you right now. Brothers and sisters, we, if there was another way, I would have found it already. I've been, I read this Bible. There is no, we have to go through all of this. We have to go through people blaming us for things we didn't do. We had to go through people hating us. We have to go through all that. We have to go through the, that's why I cherish these moments. These are the bright spots in this truth that encourages us to go another day, another week, another year, another month, or whatever. To see all you. But I mean, can you imagine what the wise be hearing some of the conversations? Like, what? Hang up the phone. I, you, we can't hang up the phone. The, the whole house is, 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 I'm sitting there hollering at the top of my, like, what's, calm down. And I mean, you know, I know where, I called Gabar one time. Gabar told me, you know, he told him, brother, listen, I'm, I'm about to full, give you a full suplex. He was about to pile drive a brother. I'm like, yeah, you know, I used to fight. I'm like, I'm like, the bar, the bar, you can't do that. <laughs> I'm like, brother, you can't MMA a brother, man. I mean, this, this is kingdom work. This is, I'm like, this is kingdom work, brother. I'm, 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 I'm in the Middle East speaking to this brother. He's talking about pile driving the Ephraimite. I'm like, brother, it's, this is kingdom building. He's like, no, because you know why he felt that way, though? Because he loved the brother. He gave his all first. And he got people on the phone lying, but he don't, at this time, Gabar don't, didn't, didn't know me at this time as far as counsel is concerned. I'm like, listen, don't worry about it. 
at the end, the truth will abound. They're going to lie. They're going to pull out the negative in you so they can record that, and that's going to be online. I'm like, but let them talk. Let them talk. Because I'm sitting there jotting it all down. 1.2.3 one point, three point. Oh, this scripture here, this scripture there, this scripture there. Taking it all down. Say, brother, what did you say? I'm, a, I'm about to take them apart like a rabbi. Okay. The, the, whole, <laughs> the whole deal is this. They want to pull out the negative in you. They want, they want people to see that's the person that I that I that I knew the whole time. This is the person I need you all to see. You wouldn't believe some of the things I've been through in this truth, brothers and sisters. But you know what? If you put your hand to the plow and you're chosen for this work, there's no running, folks. There's no place to go. Read. Verse 21, Matthew 13 and 21. Come on. Yet he have no root in himself. Yet he have no root in himself. But dureth for a while. So you will see people that hang out for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth. Now, here it is. If you're a true servant, you endure to, through persecution. You understand it's going to come. Read. For when tribulation or persecution arises, come on, because of the word, because of the word, because now you have to make a choice between the world and the most high. Read. By and by, he is offended. He is offended. The by and by, that means you have a person that can never be satisfied. Everything is an offense. Oh, why do they do it on this day? And why they can't do it this way? And why can't we do it this way? Everything is an offense. You have people that, man, you have people sitting there in the audience to be like, you know what? I seen him looking this way, and he ain't looked my way one time. Like what? <laughs> by and by, they are offended. You have people that get offended over every little thing and complain over every little thing. You can't satisfy them. because if you do give the attention to them, then you then you try to give attention to someone else. They're gonna wonder why you stop giving attention to them. Everything becomes an offense. If there's a meeting against the brotherhood, against the work, they're in charge of it. Everything that's wrong, you can count this person in those meetings. By and by, they are offended. And guess what? Elder Lawyer broke it down this Wednesday. The greatest enemy is not those that are on the outside. The greatest enemy is those who could betray you from the inside. I'm going to tell you that right now. And you know what? And, I, I, and I'll, I'll say this, though. Regardless of what their intentions are, we have to love them no less than everyone else. We have to nurture them and take care of them and care for them just like anyone else. By and by, they are offended. Read. Verse 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. Come on. And the care of this world. The care of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. And the deceitfulness of riches. Thinking you can buy your way into the kingdom of the Most High. Y'all have heard me break down this many days. Where I tell you, brothers, I had people come to me and say, yeah, which the Lord gave you that to do. But, you know, I got to go get this money. I'm, and in my mind, I'm like, I'm never, listen, 
I would rather have you than you bringing some money here. Okay? But that's the excuse. No, man, because what you dropping, it needs financing. I'm like, no. The Lord is going to put on the road what's needed. I need you. Okay? You don't know what the work needs if you're not in it. And you can't, you can't just bring money and think you can buy your way. That's not your portion. Come on. And the deceitfulness of riches. But really, the, it's not about them bringing money to the work. They're chasing money for themselves. And you know what? If that's what you're going to do, be honest. Just go do that. That's the excuse you're using not to be a part of the work. Then, you know, the Lord knows that. Just go chase money if that's, you're not ready yet. Okay, don't lie. Don't lie. Read. The care of this world. The care of this world. And the deceitfulness of riches. Come on. Choke the word. Mm. And he becometh unfruitful. And the person becometh unfruitful. Because the work was, was supposed to be amongst the body in the word of the most high. Your work wasn't supposed to be chasing money, looking for cash. That's not the work. The work is working within the body, building the body. That's the work. Just a few more. Let's get, go, go to something that I had early. Just two more and I'll pass it over. So I just wanted, brothers and sisters, to let you know that even, if, even seeing you all in passing, the most high allowed me to... I'm going to tell you, I really recognize familiar faces and know those and can see those who endure. Even if I see you in passing, to, to see you from year to year, from month to month, or whenever I see you, it's an inspiration. Because I know, like I've mentioned earlier, that this work is hard. And I also know the gravitational pull of the world. And the power of it. And the fact that y'all chose to be out someplace in the middle of nowhere camping. <laughs> when there's so much world to get is a blessing in itself. <laughs> like, yo, where they going camping? Y'all got Hennessy there? This girl there? Well, you just want to cap? No, you know, that was, that's a commandment, you know, given in, with the Lord when we get together. This is, this is the body bonding. Lord gives us a week to bond. Let's bond. Let's get to know each other. Let's be amongst each other. It's bonding time. That's what, that's all it is. I know I'm all over the place. I'm back and forth, you know. I got to leave. I got to do something. I got to come back tomorrow. But I'm going to be bonding with you. You know, even up until Monday, Tuesday, I'm going to be sitting there. We're going to be talking, bonding, whatever. We're going to be going through scriptures, whatever. We, if we want to write a song, we write a song. Whatever. That's It's bonding time. And you know what? And I'm going to tell you, people can say what they want. They can say what they want about the gathering of Christ church, but I'll tell you this. It's not too many churches in this earth that put scriptures to action. And when I say that, hey, the Lord said camp and y'all camping. So if anyone going to be wilderness ready, y'all going to remember these times in tabernacles and booths. Be like, yeah, this is how we handle it when we were in, in Pennsylvania. Okay, this, t this tent can be anywhere. We'll be in the wilderness with food. Okay? And we're going to remember these times in binding and bonding with, with one another. So I'm going to say this, brothers and sisters. I encourage you all to stay. A lot of you may be in this truth right now and really don't know your place, don't know where you belong, still trying to fill it out. That's okay. As long as you're still here. You, the Lord is going to show you eventually. He'll show you. That's why Paul wrote, 
wait on your ministry. Don't just leave because, okay, things, this is not what I thought it, it, it would be. No, it's what you make it. You have to find your calling in it. You have to find what's not being done and look at it and say, you know what? If I can see it, that's my ministry. I just have to present it to the elders in the spirit of honor and respect. But I can see it. It needs, to, it needs, it needs doing. I never tried to do what everyone else was doing. Because if I'm a body and there's already a foot, why should I try to be a foot? There's two foot already walking. Okay, I can be, you know what? The foot needs a little toe. I'm a little toe. That's good. I'm still walking. So you find a place, find a place in the ministry that the Lord has shown you and know that that's your part. Don't wait for the elder to look for something and say, well, who want to do this? And All that happens too. That's good. The volunteers. But you're not going to be happy in the truth or in the work doing what someone else wants you to do. You're only going to be fulfilled in this work when you find your calling in it. But you have to wait on your ministry. Don't walk away. Don't walk away. I'm going to tell you this right now. I've seen people walk away who you thought were strong. They were strong because why? They were within the body. When they were weak and all that, they had someone to pull them up. The strong bear the infirmities of the weak. That's what the body's for. I have weak days, but I'm glad I have brothers who can pull me up. So the problem is not that they weren't strong. They had a body. And then they get out there by themselves and get torn apart. Get torn apart. Come on, other lawyer. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. He sent us unto the nations that have spoiled us. I'm going into the prophecy that lead that led us to this time. Read. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. The nations, the world, touched the apple of the Most High's eye, who we are. So the Most High, as we speak right now, as we speak right now, is bringing forth prophecy that's tearing the nations asunder. They, let me tell you, you see what's going on in the earth right now, wars and rumors of wars, all these things that's happening right now. You see, and that's why you notice when we teach and when I try to teach, I don't even focus on what's, what's going to happen to the other nations. It's clear what's happening to them. Our focus is, is, is how to sharpen and strengthen our people to endure through this for our time. To correct the ills and the shortcomings within us so that we're prepared for the fall when the fall happens. Read. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 14. So the Most High called us the apple of his eye. Read. Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 14. Come on. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Most High. The days come, saith the Most High. That it shall no more be said, hmm. the Lord liveth. That have brought you or brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. It will no longer be said, thus saith the Lord who brought us up out of the land of Egypt. Now coming out of the land of Egypt is where we dwelt in Booth. The celebration we have now called tabernacles. Wandering in the wilderness. And through that wilderness, boy. Mutinies offenses. You know there was no law of divorce, right? Moses put that in the law because there was nothing but fights between husbands and wives all in the wilderness. All in the wilderness. No, that's what he said. That's what she said. No, 
She, she lying on me, Moses. She lying. And then she, she, she was doing what she wanted. He was doing what he wanted. And we, the elders were so focused on domestic issues, the nation stood still for years. There was no movement because they were just strictly dealing with domestic issues. Moses said, in order for us to move, maybe they'll work it out in between. But the only way we can move, if I write a bill of divorce where they're not accountable to each other, now we can move. He put it in the law because of the hardness of our heart. That we would make our houses the focus opposed to the whole nation receiving the kingdom of heaven. It's crazy. The selfishness that this Moses had to say, I know what. Divorce. What? Moses? That wasn't in the beginning. Divorce. Do you want to counsel and lead Israel to the mount? Or, hey, do you want to just deal with domestic dis disputes in this one's place forever? And you know what? It tripped me out when uh, Shabbat said, man, it's spiritual that the place we do tabernacle is Mount Nebo. <laughs> you know, Mount Nebo was the Mount of Moses. <laughs> it's incredible but I'm going into this is that brothers and sisters the most high is preparing us and I'm telling you right now as I'm before you right now speaking here's the truth brothers and sisters what's going on in the earth will lead us back into the wilderness we will be in the wilderness and it won't be a choice but to live in tents it's coming it's coming. Enjoy our sealed houses while we still can. Or you'll be singing that song. Hey, where you want me to? Hey, where, where do you want that chip? They'd be like, where you want? You can put it anywhere. I'm staying in my house. Well, you can stay in your house with the mark of the beast. And I'll be in the wilderness under a tent flipping pancakes. Okay? Read on. Verse 15. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel Come on. from the land of the north. From the land of the north, read. And from all the lands whither he have driven them. And all the lands whither he have driven them. I know for sure through the spirit of the most high that the gospel of the kingdom that need to be taught throughout this earth, not focusing on hating anyone and just bringing the pure truth that the Most High have given us a mission in this church to finish it. I know that. I know it 100%. And when, when it says this gospel of the kingdom should be taught, have to be taught throughout the full cause of the earth, then the end shall come. We have to do it. You have to do it. You will do it. Read. The rest of verse 15. Come on. And I will bring them again into their land Come that on. I gave unto their fathers. Yes. Verse 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord. He will send for many fishers. What season is this? Fishing season. This is time to gather everyone in the fold who the Lord will use for the next chapter in, in this ministry. This is fishing season. But soon, fishing season will be over, folks. This is the first level. Bringing people into the fold, having them find their part in the work. Go on. And they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters. Many, many what? Many hunters. Many hunters, read. And they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rock. I'm going to tell you this right now, folks. When it all goes down, 
when the lights when the lights go off in Babylon, they're not coming back on. I'm gonna tell you that right now. When it goes down, when they when the, when 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 that those wars happen in this earth, many people, many of people that we know are gonna say, you know what? I should have listened. It's gonna be hunting season. You have military everywhere. It's gonna be it's gonna be wild. People being hunted. Now imagine a life that you've lived and thinking that I'm independent. I don't need no one. I'm good all by myself. I don't need I don't need a support system because the world has been supporting me. What happens when the world broke down and now you're left with no friends and no support system? You'll be hunted. You will be hunted. That's when you're going to realize you miss your calling. I'm going to tell you this. And the churches, man, <laughs> the churches, you have to realize you're going to have one or two options in these with this truth. You're either going to be in the wilderness where we're going to be led without the mark of the beast, or you will be gathered in these stadiums. That they will be the only place for refuge until people are moved into centers, folks. They these stadiums are processing plants for people. They will be taken over by people. So that's where families, all the churches, their relief system will be those stadiums. That's going to be their wilderness. They will be gathered into the stadiums to be processed. I'll take my chances in the wilderness. And the perfect example of that, look what happened not too long ago in Houston when they broke the levees on purpose and, and flood those people there. Where was Joel Osteen? He was somewhere chilling somewhere in his jet on an island somewhere. Initially didn't let people into the into the stadium or into because you know he bought a basketball stadium over there in Houston for a church. I know a lot of you don't know that. He purchased the old basketball stadium for his Sunday services in Houston. That's going to be the process and plan. T.D. Jakes and all these people, why do you think they broke down all the mom and pop uh, uh, churches and made it where they can't survive unless they all come together under a union within the mega churches? Because they will be funneled all into the stadiums when it's time. Your pastor's not going to lead you. They're going to tell you where to meet. You are to meet at the stadiums. It's going to go down. When the disasters hit, I'm going to tell you, we're dropping it. We've been dropping this for years. Our families are going to wish and other people out there are going to wish they listen. Read. Verse 17. For my eyes are upon all their ways. Come on. They are not hid from my face. Neither is there iniquity hid from mine eyes. And first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double because they have defiled my land and they have filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. So eventually after the fishing, then the Most High is going to bring forth the real purge. Not the movies. The real purge. His spirit is going to be on the nations against the sinners of our people, folks. The most high spirit will be on the nations against the sinners of Israel. It's coming. So I'm, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm wanting to encourage you. To continue. Don't let no one sway you left or right or try to discourage you. If they try to discourage you, you can come back and ask, well, okay, what is the alternative? What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? 
If this is not the truth, show me the truth. No. Don't get upset. Don't do it. Listen, let's pray and know that it, it'll be better tomorrow. Don't try to dissuade me. Don't try to shake my faith because it's hard enough me enduring by myself without that weight. So if someone try to come and discourage you, say, no, no, I'm not dealing with it. I'm going to endure with the body. I'm going to find my part in the ministry and finish this with the gathering of Christ church. And that's who we are. Elder Godger. You have a word, my brother, before we turn it over? Um, I don't know if I think you said it. Say something. Come on, say something. Yeah. Shalom, everybody. How you doing? Um, first of all, praises to the most. Let's give yourself a round of applause. One more time. You with me? All right. Um, so many things going on, brothers and sisters. Um, I'll touch on a lot of topics, a lot of, a lot of stuff happening. So it's not really much I can come with more than you know, saying that everybody should just have a, just take a look or take a look around you. All right, those of us who've been here a bit longer, just have a look around you. All right, just look to your brother to the left, to the right. You understand? And understand that this is family. It's not church. We're not building. We're not. We're not. We're not building a church. We're building a nation of people. You understand? A nation of people is coming back to the most time. A nation of people. It's not Sunday church, okay? It's a nation of people coming back to the most time. And it's family. And in family, we're going to have ups and downs. You understand? It's family. It's, you understand what it is? Not every day is going to be peaches and rainbows. We're going to have days that are bad. But and I spoke about this the other day. The binding factor, because a lot of us in here come from different walks of life. God? The binding factor is this. The binding factor is Christ. Elder lawyer, my elder, if you don't mind, you read a, a, a few verses for me, please. Can you get me um, 1 Corinthians, the 11 chapter, and the 28 verse, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. Come on. But let a man examine himself. Read that again, please. But let a man examine himself. So, brothers and sisters, this is something that we have to continually do. Um, do all right? And these, these holy days and feast days are the, are the examples for it. Where we have to examine ourselves. You understand me? We have to reflect. The most I allow us another year to come and be together. You understand? We see new faces. I mean, you know... Apart from um, the, the body in New York, most of you have seen me are seeing me for the first time, right? God, so we see we meet new people. It's straightened up. There was a time when I couldn't come, I couldn't be here. Now I'm here, so it's you know it's it's it, it, it's straightening up. So we have to keep we have to keep it keep the strength because the adversary is a worthy adversary and he's looking a way to tear down. You with me? And we he can only come in if we're not examining ourselves. Because then we become the problem. Like the elders alluded to the first part of, um, of, of when you were saying that. Listen, we can tear down anybody with the scriptures. You understand me? Any any little, you know, two-day-old monkey religion come up with us, we will slew it. You understand? We will slew it and burn it. You understand? <laughs> you with me? We will, that, that's what we do. But how often do we examine ourselves according to the scriptures? You understand? How often do we say, yo, listen, why isn't, why isn't it working for me? What's going on? Could it be that, could it, you know, is it, is it, is it, is it, is it the system? Or is it the most I trying to show me something? You understand? So the Bible says you're examining yourself. Give me Haggai 1 and 6, 1 and 5. Haggai 1 and 5. And I'll, and I'll just say, I'll just say that. You with me? And I'll pass over to El Logobar, El Logobar, if you have anything to say. You with me? This is, you know, because... You know, I'm very happy to be here. You with me? <laughs> honestly, honestly, man, I'm very happy to, you know, it's, it's a blessing to be here. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit tired and it's cold, you know, us Caribbean folks, not used to this weather. You with me? <laughs> All right. 
Let's start at five, please. Yes, sir. The book of Haggai, chapter 1, verse 5. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So the Most High is telling us that we need to consider our ways. You understand me? Things not working out, things going bad, things going sideways. We need to examine ourselves. Examine our ways. You understand? It's, you know, it's, it, it's look, the, the scriptures is of no purpose. The truth is of no purpose if it can't change it. You, me, if it can't change us. That, that was the change. The Pharisees knew the law. The Pharisees knew it. But they were doing things that were, were, were contrary to the law, even though they knew it. And that's what Christ was calling them up about. Like you're being hypocrites now, you. You with me? You know the law. You know the right from wrong. You know it. We know it. We, we can break down any Christian pastor coming here right now. It will be problems. You understand? Any imam coming here will be problems. Any, any Egyptologist coming here and going to be in problems. You with me? But how do we how do we reflect that on us? Can I look myself in the mirror and go, yo, 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 you being yo, you being evil right now. You're an evil guy. You understand? What, it, what, what how is Christ going? How would Christ react to you operating like this? You understand? So the truth is pointless if, if we can't if we can't examine ourselves with it. It's pointless. It serves no purpose. Um, James uh, James 1 uh, and 20 says, um, Be you um, not just hearers of the law, but doers of the, of the law. Because if a man is just be a hearer, it's like a, just, it's like a man looking in the mirror at himself. <laughs> it's just, just looking there. Are you with me? It doesn't change it. You understand? So it's about that change. It's about that, you know, we are, we are, we, we, we are you know, we are our own worst enemies. You with me? We can be our, we can self-destruct in a minute. And like I said, the only thing that we have the, that hold us together is, is, is the word. You understand me? You know, you have a house, and I say this all the time, you have a house, and the house, in the house, the, the, the washing machine breaks. All right? What do you do? Do you pack up and leave? You fix the washing machine, right? The same thing going on. It's a family, we're going we're gonna to have ups we're gonna have downs but it's for us to examine ourselves and say yo listen am i am i moving in the fruits of the spirit am i being patient am i being forgiven is this love is this peace is this joy you understand pastor yo to them there's no law against that keep reading for me please elder verse six you have so much and bring in little we are doing things sometimes we're sowing much but little coming in we're not seeing what you know the efforts of what we're putting out is not coming in the most is telling us to examine ourselves the most i saying look at look at what you're doing because we might be blaming every everything else out there except the man in the mirror you understand read ye eat but ye have not enough come on ye drink but you're not filled with drink ye clothe ye for ye clothe you but there is none warm and he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. I don't know if people can relate to that. You understand me? We're doing things and it's not working out. The, 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 the fifth verse said, consider your ways. Just consider them. What's going on amongst us? Go on up. Verse 7. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Read. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it, Go and on. I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye look for much, and lo, it came to little, and when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. So it's like, you know, we come into, the, we come into that individual, individualism. You with me? We're, we, we're, more focused on, we're more focused on building ourselves. You understand? It, you know, it becomes that thing where it's, about, it's me, it's mine, it's, you know, it's what I can get. And the most I say, when you build it, I'm going to blow on it. <laughs> you understand? I'm going to blow on it. Consider your ways. Consider the ways. So I'm saying, I'm saying as, a, as, a, as a family. You understand? I'm not saying brothers and sisters. I'm, like that. I'm saying family. You understand? Because you're my family. There's, no, there's nowhere else I can go. You understand? The flesh and blood family has turned me away. 
You with me? So the only ones I have is the one in the works. Christ said, you know, who is my family? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? Them that know the will of the most high. Hey, God, yeah. So, oh, oh. No. I, let, <laughs> I know y'all wonder why I'm laughing. Like I say, there's many stories of when he said the most high would blow on it. Let me give you an example. When we first began to drop the truth on Gaja. Now, you all know Gaja didn't believe the Bible at all. He was on some black power stuff. But he was fighting tooth and nail against the Bible. And then he finally realized it, that he had to work. He tried to run. Right? That's why the Lord says consider his way. If anyone can give this example, we all have our examples. Gaja can. He tried to run. He told me he's going to Jamaica for a while. So I started laughing. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, he'll be back. So he thought he's going to make some extra money because Gaja was a hustler in the world. He tried to do certain things and he wanted to be a self-made man opposed to working for corporations. I understood that. So he got with some brothers that was in the truth, not just to do the truth, but also to make some extra ends meet, some money. So he go, he go and make this uh, deal to get a truck or something shipped to Africa, <laughs> right? To go ship to Africa, so because in Africa this same car or truck, he can make three or four times the amount it's worth in England. And I'm sitting there laughing because he told me what happened to the truck. Guys, and tell them what happened to the truck. <laughs> it gets to Africa, right? Yeah, it, gets it gets through customs, everything. And what happens? It gets to Africa and it's leaving from the wharf headed to Harare. It's in Zimbabwe. And it, it hits a cow. It hit, oh look, a cow was on the road. Totaled the car on the road. The, 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 <laughs> the, the driver walks out. And the cow walks away. <laughs> Look, the cow totally wasn't damaged at all. The cow walked away with no issue in Africa. The truck is totally, car is total. Yeah. Left right there. It's total. That's it. And I, you know what? And I, I started laughing. What you, what you laughing about? What you laughing? I'm like, listen, brother, you cannot run. There's only one way in, in and one way out. You talk, the real Godfather is a higher. Okay? <laughs> That's the real Godfather. The most I blew on it. Well, go on. Yeah, that's that's exactly <laughs> that's exactly what happened. There's many there's many stories like that. You with me? Yeah. There's many stories like that though, and I test I can testify to it. So it it, it just it, it helped me to say you know something that it, it's a learning point for me. So I'm, I'm I'm sharing it with everybody. Listen, we have to consider our ways. You with me? We have to consider sometimes things aren't going the way we want it to go, and it's, it, it has nothing to do with. Nobody, it's not, you know, it's not witchcraft, it's not nothing. It's not the white man, it's not the system, it's us. You understand? It's just us. You with me? And um, and just the last couple of words I want to say, and I'll pass it to the elders. Listen, brothers and sisters, right? Family, loyalty. All right? Loyalty is royalty. Just remember that. All right? All right. And I like to say this, brothers and sisters. Okay. So that baby, that, that baby need, you know, mama's help. Somebody give, give a blanket and, you know, and, have that baby de deal with some food. <laughs> now, I'm gonna drop this on you brothers and sisters real quick before we uh, turn it over back to Elder Gabar. 
I would like us through the spirit this year to really focus on what it means to be an Israelite or a child of God in honor. We have perfected all the other areas of the law. We know to wear fringes. We know it reminds us of the law. We know not to eat pork. We know we know the Sabbath. We know all the laws, or we learn in them anyway, and the ones we learn, we exercise. So that's not where we're falling short. Let's take our time going forward in this truth to understand and know what honor is. And let's also check this out. Let's also exercise the spirit of being able to turn the other cheek. Everything don't need to be an offense. Someone have to take the high road. If someone do you wrong, the wrong can only continue if you respond to it. That's, that's the way, only you can stop it right there by not responding to it. If someone so their flesh, you sow back in the spirit. They're looking for a physical response or a carnal response. So let's try to practice Christ on another level with the law. Honor. I'm not going to be dishonorable anymore. I'm not going to say things behind people's back just for the sake of having conversation. I'm not going to backbite. If I hear it, I'm going to... Those in the conversation are going to know that I'm not comfortable with it. They're going to know, well, you're going to have to have another private conversation outside of me. Honor. That's what it's going to take. Honor. It takes honor. We have to honor the most high. And brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you this. The elder over your community, over your churches. Okay, and I'm not saying this for the sake of me. If that brother or elder or that elder sister that the Most High set up to help God the young widows, if they're in position, honor that position. You don't know what it took for them to choose that role and be there for you and are still there. Honor that. The Most High is much pleased with honor. We're going to need each other. We have to trust on each other. And b before it's over, it's going to mean life or death. Seriously. So let's start rehearsing that honor. Being totally respectful to the absent. If someone is saying something and have someone someone else's name in their mouth, make sure, make sure you you resolve that and say, you know what? When I'm not around, my name is in their mouths. Cut it off at the head, folks. Dishonor. I gave them an example of years ago when I was in the old world, the old church years ago. And this is the last example I'm going to give before I give it over to him. There was a brother that started all that in Philadelphia from the New York camp who was being accused of something. He's out there today. He was being accused of something inside of New York. When I went there, they wanted to bring up accounts, but I was like, listen, I can't be in a meeting against another brother or hear art of another brother in his absence. I'd rather not be in the room or we can talk about something else because the brother's not around. And you know what? I left the room. <laughs> okay. That was an example of giving honor to a person who was absent. Because why? 
The lynch mobs that, that are in private, this is how I examine things. If I was, if I was in the crowd or living during Christ time, I would either be one of the two. I would be those who are in Christ or those who are in the private meetings conspiring to kill him in his absence. We would either be one or the two. So when I see people together, gather together, and they come up with all these charges that they have been doing together by themselves, that's no different than what happened to Christ. To accuse someone in their absence, then come as if, well, I'm just concerned. No, you're not just concerned. You had a meeting. You had a meeting. To destroy another brother or sister in his absence or in her absence. That's dishonor. Let's try to practice that this, this year. You know, some people do it and they don't, they don't know they're doing it. You have to remind them that they're going there. Let's practice honor so that we don't by default kill our brother or sister. Let me turn it over to the elder. Well, praise to the most high. Let's give it up one more game. One more time for the work. And the elders coming. Give it the Holy Spirit, wisdom, and understanding. There's an ending. I just want to end with a scripture, okay? Uh, uh, and just land back on the scripture. We, we were going over the subject in regards to, you know, the most high bringing his glory upon the earth and doing that now with us. And for us to understand what that is and not take for granted what we're doing here and thinking this is something that's mundane or something not important. When we talk about forgiving your brother, when we're talking about uh, being meek with one another, uh, respecting the elders and the deacons and the officers that, that we, the church has been uh, appointed, regardless whether they even they may be learning, you know, ask, <laughs> they're in that position. I know I did, <laughs> okay? So respect the position. You, you guys are gonna understand when, when society collapses, this thing that we have right here is gonna be literally the kingdom of heaven on earth. Yeah. So let's go over some scriptures real quick. Let's go to Ezekiel uh, 39 and 21. And we'll end it there. Because the glory is gonna come with you. The kingdom of heaven is in you, right? So let's read it real quick. Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 21. And I will set my glory among the heathen. And that glory is us, the children of Israel. Read. And all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed. And he's going to, all the nations are going to see how we treat each other. How we're going to be operating. That's why in the scriptures it says, be under one mind and one judgment. Right? Read. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hands that I have laid upon them. Come on. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their power from that day and forward. Come on. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity uh -huh. for their iniquity. Now they're going to say this is the reason why what happened to the people in America, people, brown, black and brown people, what happened to them? Why they went into slavery? Why they were getting uh, killed? Why 51% of unemployment? Why one out of four in jail? Oh, now we get it. It's prophecy, right? Read. Because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. And that's why the elders always focus on what? Self-reflection. Because we have no one to blame but ourselves. Read. So fell they all by the sword, according to their according to their uncleanness, and according to their transgressions have I done unto them. Uh-huh. And hid my face from them. Uh-huh. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Power. Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob. When he says, I'll bring the captivity of Jacob, it's actually a good thing. Because we were captive to the Most High. 
but we were disobedient to what he did. He cut us loose. All right. You're going to be now captives for everybody else. You're free. I want to let you go. Right? Read. And have mercy upon the whole house of Israel. Uh huh. And will be jealous for my holy name. Uh huh. After that, they have borne their shame in all their trespasses where they have trespassed so against can, me. That name cannot be Yahweh because everybody and their mother knows that name. Because he gave us the name. Read. After that, they have borne their shame and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me. Jump down to uh, 29. God. 28, Salakia. Uh, verse 28. Then shall they know that I am the Lord their power, which calls them to be led into captivity among the heathen. Come on. But I have gathered them unto their own land and left none of them, or le left none of them any more there. Come on. Neither will I hide my face any more from them. Uh -huh. For I have poured my spirit upon the house of Israel. And now he's doing that now. He's pouring that spirit among us. So that's why we keep stressing. Forgive your brother. Love your brother. Don't leave the church. Keep working. I know it's frustrating. I know sometimes it's hard. It's it's it, we because we are married to one, one another. Exactly. When I was having the, the wedding with uh, Officer Ganon and Sister Danielle, I was saying, you know, marriage is a plethora of emotions. Your couple is gonna bring out of you every emotion that exists. But once you survive. That third part, right? Because you got the first part, the honeymoon, everybody's, you know. Then you got the second part of that third part. You're that perfect couple. That's your best friend. That's your other half. You can't function without that other person. That's what we have to become as a church. Keep reading. Neither will I hide my face anymore from them. And when we do that, the Moses is going to start turning his face towards us. We move towards him, he moves towards us. We move away from him, he's going to move away from us. One step forward, he, he brings steps forward, right? Let's read. For I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord power. Let's give the most high hand. No praise the most high. So keep working, keep struggling, stay in the fight, don't give up, don't leave the church, stay in there, grow, free preaching, prove the spirit, let's build this nation, don't preach to the most high. But now I'm found, I'm a child of Israel, I heard the 